Representative Richardson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the floor to Representative Roussan. Representative Roussan, you are recognized, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And thank you, Representative uh, Mia Jones. It not only matters to you, it matters to Chevron Jones. It matters to Chair Narain. It matters to Representative Bruce Antone. It matters to Representative Cynthia Stafford. It, ra it matters to Representative Larry Lee. And what I'm trying to point out by that is members, there is a stark reality of some of our members when it comes to guns. We've all had our experiences with guns. Paris, Whitehead Hamilton, eight years old, killed in a drive-by sleeping in her bed in St. Petersburg. I will never forget Cynthia Bethune, the 40-year-old mother of four who walked one block to get a loaf of bread to feed her four boys and was struck in the head, killed in a hail of gunfire by some thugs in St. Peter. And I was so mad about it when Officer Patrick McGovern called me that morning and I got in my car and rode over there and saw her guts in the dirt and pulled, and I went back and pulled several thousand dollars out of my pocket and stood on a street corner in St. Pete and bought 117 guns back because I didn't know what else to do. We've been here before. And if it, and I know it matters to some of you, but make it matter when you push the button. There are African American members of this caucus that are starkly and deathly, deathly afraid of the passage of this bill. And I'm raising five boys, five black boys, and mentoring another. And the reality that's being talked about is real. Son, it used to be that the best chance a black man had to live was to run. Today, the best chance you have is to stop, hold up your hands, and quit, and let us fight for you. We've been here before. Don't let the bullet leave this chamber again. 1987, when Attorney General Bob Butterworth wrote a letter to Governor Bob Martinez and said, we've made a mistake by allowing this open carry loophole to let the Los Angeles Times say this, the Florida House and Senate voted unanimously to close a loophole in a new gun law that apparently lets people carry weapons openly in public without fear of being arrested. Though the bill's different slightly, the issue will be addressed again today. We've received a lot of bad publicity on this matter, said State Representative Ron Silver. The new law was intended to make it easier to get licenses to carry concealed weapons. But in passing the law, the legislature also struck down an 1893 law that forbade the open carrying of guns. We closed that loophole once. Why do we want to open again? Don't let the bullet leave this chamber to cause unintended consequences. And what has happened in the last 19 years since we closed the loophole? More mass shootings, more theater shootings, more paranoia, more people killed. And look, I could put the kickstand down right here and hang here for a minute. Because racial profiling is real. And people are dying. If you think unarmed black men are dying, check out what's going to happen if a few get armed. It may be harder 
for police to tell the good guys from the bad guys. In the Northwest Florida Daily News, Representative Gates, they are reporting that the Okaloosa County gun violence has been on the rise, on the spike. The state attorney, Bill Eddins, said, we are beginning to look like the big urban centers. Gun violence has become ridiculously common this year in Okaloosa County. And the, ma and the vast majority of blood being spilt is that of young black men. How do we go home to our, how do we as black state representatives go home to our district and tell them we voted for the passage of this bill? How do we do it? Members, don't let the bullet leave this chamber. We are a state of parks and beaches and themes of family friendly. We don't want people to say this is the gunshine state, that it's the wild, wild west. Members, don't let the bullet leave this chamber again. Representative Richardson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the floor to Representative Roussan. Representative Roussan. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Open carry, campus carry, two different things, and I'll try to keep my remarks distinct to campus carry. But it's all about guns, firearms, dangerous instruments. And we've heard a lot of debate on both sides of the aisle. We've heard touching stories, real life examples of where a parent had anxiety over a child's safety away from home. And all of those things touch me. On October 9th, a fraternity fight broke out in a northern Arizona university parking lot. One of the participants ran to his car, grabbed his gun, opened fire, killing one and injuring three others. The shooter was an avid gun enthusiast. On August 26th, a heated argument in a Texas Southern University parking lot turned deadly when one of the individuals killed one person and wounded a bystander. On January 30th, a fight erupted at an Eastern Florida State College parking lot. One of the participants grabbed a gun and injured one of his attackers. All three men involved in the incident claimed they were acting in self-defense. On January 22nd, an argument described as idiocy and stupidity escalated into a fight on the Lone Star College campus. One of the men pulled a gun and injured the other combatant and also wounded a nearby maintenance worker. Are these going to be commonplace? Will we become numb to guns on campuses and fights that break out in lives that are taken? That's what I fear and you know at one point in a delegation meeting when the newspaper the morning after the Oregon Community College shooting was raised and the college president was challenged to join and change position on this. It upset me because of what happened the night before. The emotionality of what happened, the, the fatality of what happened, the finality of a shooter on a college campus. And I said, you know, I wasn't going to support that bill, but now I'm going to support it. Maybe if we had had 1,000 more guns on that college campus, maybe five less lives would have gotten killed. And matter of fact, I wanted to file an amendment to the bill, an amendment that would include a renter gun provision so that if a student or faculty member wanted to feel safe and couldn't afford to buy a 357, they could rent one from the college campus on that day. 
And wouldn't that be a great revenue stream for our starved colleges and universities? But the problem with the amendment was that it just might pass. <laughs> That's where common sense showed up. I think of depression. I think of anxiety over grades. I think of immaturity and, and incidents where, uh, w when does a person being assaulted that usually starts out as consensual and becomes non-consensual have time to grab a gun and fend off the attacker? We haven't heard screaming by faculty, by professors, by students, except in opposition. And we've created an inequity by passing this bill. Private colleges and religious institutions, are they oases of freedom because they got God and they don't have gun? The greatest threat on our college campus is binge drinking. The greatest threat on our college campuses is hazing. The greatest threat on our college campuses is substance abuse and not safety where guns are the solution. I'm sorry, but since when does the great state of Florida use Texas and Illinois and California as examples and models of excellence in public safety on college campuses? Friends, I appeal to you in the words of Representative Kerner when he talked about humility. I've never owned a gun. Don't feel the need for one and have walked up inside dope houses and stood on street corners with gangbangers who were packing and I didn't have a gun. And I'm standing here today because I was armed with something else which is what we should arm our children with when they leave home and go to college. So members, I implore you today that this doesn't pass the gut check test. Now I don't know about the SAT and the ACTs and the LSAT, I didn't do too well on those exams. But I know about the gut check. And it's something that's born in us, something that's learned in us through time. So with all due respect, please think of your gut and whether or not by passing this legislation, we are truly creating an island of safety by allowing more guns on our college campuses. Thank you.